In terms of speedrunning, Pokemon Red and Yellow are best known for their any percent glitchless categories. Since the rule set for these categories bans the game's most significant glitches, such as walking through walls and save corruption, the result is a fairly straightforward normal experience. Travel across the region, collect all 8 badges, then beat the Elite Four and Champion. With major glitches banned, there's just no way to skip any of the game's intended content, right? Well, as it turns out, there is one part of the game that gets skipped. In normal playthroughs of the Gen 1 games, players are expected to enter the Celadon game corner, only to discover that it's actually a hideout for Team Rocket. After navigating the hideout and defeating their leader, Giovanni, players obtain the Sylph Scope, which they can use to identify the Ghost in Lavender Tower. More importantly, this allows players to identify and get past the Marowak Ghost on the tower's fifth floor. This of course lets players obtain the Poke Flute, which is needed to progress further in the game. However, speedrunners are able to skip this section of the game with the help of an otherwise obscure and rarely used item, the Pokey Doll. By using the doll against the Marowak Ghost, runners can bypass it without the need for the Sylph Scope. This skip is by far one of the most interesting and downright bizarre parts of Pokemon Red and Yellow. So, if you're as curious about this phenomenon as I was, allow me to tell you all about it. The origins of this skip are as ambiguous and weird as the skip itself. I mean really, who in their right mind tried this out in the first place? In virtually all written routes for the game that are still around, the Pokédoll skip is a given, an automatic inclusion. And yet, there is virtually no documentation on when it was discovered, or by whom. In fact, even the oldest records for both Red and Yellow Glitchless on Speedrun.com feature the Pokédoll skip. So to find the answers we're looking for, we'll have to go even further back. Welcome to Speed Demos Archive, a speedrunning site that launched back in 1998. The site was basically the speedrun.com of its time. It showcased the fastest runs submitted for each game, and it even had forums for users to discuss strategies. The oldest record available for Pokemon Red and Blue seems to be this glitchless segmented run by Ben Cygnus Goldberg in May of 2005, with an in-game time of 2 hours and 40 minutes. I decided to look through the run's description to see if it used the Pokedoll skip. Lo and behold, I found this tidbit near the end. Someone said in the forums that you could use a Pokédoll instead of the Sylph Scope. As it turns out, this may have been the last record of this game without the Pokédoll skip. The first forum post on this site about Pokémon speedrunning seems to be this thread from a user called Mr. Scary Muffin. This entire thread provides some fascinating insight about some of the earliest brainstorming of Pokémon routing, but things get really interesting when someone brings attention to another thread made at the time. In this thread, made by a user named WJZZ, we see what is quite possibly the origin of the Pokédoll skip. The writing of the post itself is sort of hard to understand. Immediate reception to it was confused at best and skeptical at worst. However, others saw the potential value in the skip, the ability to easily skip an entire location in the game without using any sort of game-breaking glitch. The next record, posted by Cygnus in January of 2006, was the first world record speedrun to utilize the Pokédoll skip. From that point on, it became a staple of Gen 1 glitchless speedruns. So that clears up when the skip was discovered, but how exactly does the skip work anyway? After all, there's still something that needs to be cleared up. In normal circumstances, the Pokédoll is a single-use item that allows the player to escape from a wild Pokémon encounter. In other words, using the Pokédoll should be no different than running from the Marowak Ghost, since the Ghost is technically just a wild Pokémon encounter, right? But as it turns out, if you run from the Marowak Ghost, the game pushes you away from the Ghost Overworld tile, forcing you to restart the encounter. So if the Pokédoll's intended function is to let you escape from a wild battle, why is its effect on the Marowak Ghost different than running away from it? Well, first of all, it was pretty important for Game Freak to let you run away from the battle without letting you progress. That way a player could backtrack, get the Sylph Scope, and then fight the Ghost. 
This would allow you to either outright defeat the ghost, or end the wild encounter with a phasing move like Whirlwind, Roar, or Teleport. So what does the Polka Doll's functionality have to do with all this? The answer is simple. Polka Doll is programmed more similarly to the moves Teleport, Whirlwind, and Roar than to running away from a battle. It's this distinction that enables the Polka Doll skip to work. What's even stranger about this is that they remembered to make Pokeballs not work on the Marowak Ghost, even if you have the self scope. Yet they seem to have forgotten about the only other battle item that could potentially cause a sequence break here. So with this being said, you might be wondering, why is the skip allowed in a category called any percent glitchless? After all, sequence breaking like this is surely a glitch, right? Personally, I'd call it more of an oversight. The thing is, the Polka Doll is functioning just as intended, is just being used in an unexpected situation. Compare this to something like Owlless in Super Mario 64. In the level Womp's Fortress, there's a star titled Fall Onto the Caged Island, which alludes to the expectation that players will use an owl to fly up to the star's location. However, it's possible for a skilled player to acquire the star by jumping towards a specific part of the cage, wall kicking off the side of it, and holding towards the cage to reach the star. Was it intended for players to get the star without using the owl? Probably not, but the developers intentionally programmed triple jumping and wall kicking to function the way they do. So is it really a glitch if a creative player uses these intended mechanics and properties to achieve something unexpected? No, I don't think so. But fortunately, this is a rare situation in which we actually have evidence that this isn't a glitch. Back in April of 2020, there was a leak of Gen 1 source code posted on the website 4chan. Within the source code, debug logs for Pokemon Yellow were found, and one of those debug logs happens to describe the Pokedoll skip. Keep in mind that this log was translated from Japanese with Google Translate, which explains why the grammar and certain names are somewhat skewed, but the important part is right here at the bottom, this brief response from a developer. It is a specification. In context, this essentially means that the situation is working as intended. In other words, the Pokédoll skip is not a glitch, as it was noticed during the development of the yellow version and intentionally left in the game. Some might argue that they kept it in the game in order to keep it consistent with red and blue, but keep in mind that the devs had no problem making other bug-related changes to yellow. For example, here's a log describing the famous method for getting missing no in red and blue, which was notably fixed in yellow. I think this makes it pretty clear that the developers had no problem with the Pokédoll skip, so neither should glitchless runners. One more thing. Even though the skip was kept for the yellow version, you may be wondering why the skip was removed in Fire Red and Leaf Green, the remakes of Gen 1. In technical terms, the reason why it doesn't work in the remakes is because the games now force you to defeat the Marowak Ghost in order for you to proceed. There are a couple of different possibilities for why this change was made. One is that the skip was simply forgotten about, and the developers made the skip impossible by sheer coincidence. Another possibility is that they retroactively changed their stance on the skip, deciding that players shouldn't be able to skip the rocket hideout. Regardless, I don't think the fact that it's not in the remakes has any bearing on whether or not it was a glitch in the originals. Well, I hope you enjoyed this investigation into the Pokédoll skip as much as I did. There's something so interesting about reading these ancient forum posts about Pokemon speedrunning, knowing how popular it's become. But honestly, I'm even more thrilled by the fact that this isn't a glitch, so we don't need to have these stupid arguments anymore about whether or not we need to ban the skip. It feels good to run a game that doesn't need to worry about glitches ruining the... Hey, what's going on? Why is the text printing so fast? Well, alright, I guess we can let this be used too. What's the worst that could happen? Thanks for watching, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions.